Consistent with our commitment of teaching you how to make money, today we bring you the story of a mushroom farmer. This is our experience. I'm Naju Korecho, a youth of 31 years of age, based in Chigombia village, Mokono district. I am a social worker pro by profession and a mushroom farmer in business. I started mushroom growing longer way, way back in 2014 when I had my mentor, that is Senior Joe Bryan, who informed me about mushroom growing as a good business. When I started, I started with 150,000, whereby I bought 50 gardens. But after two months, I saw that this business is profitable. That's why I had to continue looking at mushroom growing as a business. By 2012, I, com uh, I completed as a social worker by profession, but all those years I was looking for some, something I could do with my own hands and be profitable. So that's why I, I resolved to mushroom growing. Since it was something that is not challenging, easy to grow and pro very profitable. Every after two days, farmer will be picking the mushrooms. It is quite a simple business whereby everybody can do it, no matter you are an, in, in office, because you always water in the morning and in the evening. So during the day, you have nothing to do. Right now, I'm having all products regarding mushroom. I do have the cotton hassocks that I sell to other outgrowers. I have the fresh mushroom that is also sold, sold to my customers in supermarkets, hotels, and also individuals. I have the dry mushrooms because I add value on this mushroom. I have the dry mushrooms that I sell to also supermarkets and other individuals. From there I also add on value to make mushroom powder and this mushroom powder is needed by most of the people who want to add a mushroom into their products. Most of the times I do sell in kilograms and a kilogram goes to 7,000 shillings and also pack powder. These are also sold in kilograms because a, a kilogram of powder goes to 70,000 shillings and a kilogram of dry mushroom goes for 60,000 shillings. And uh, it also helped me to start up an organization that is support the African Child Initiative based in SETA, Goma Division, Mokono District. And that organization is there to help the parents of these children so that they earn a living. Mushroom growing has all a bit been good, but the challenge is we look at transportation because we always obtain quite a, a large, a, a big quantity, and we face that challenge of transporting these mushrooms to the market and also obtaining cotton from very far away distances. To here, they charge us quite a lot of money. Another challenge is about the machine machinery, whereby in everything we do, we are using our local means and our hands. In the future, I look at myself being the lead supplier of mushrooms of all categories in Mokono district and also Uganda at large. Because when, as I'm looking at this business, I look at very many outgrowers out there supplying me the mushroom, and also I myself supplying to that market, both local and regional markets. I urge youths right now to 
get a stand, know what they want in future, and they begin. Well, this year the rains seem to have come a little earlier than they normally do. Now, for those interested in putting some coffee in the ground, we'll share with you tips on how you can go about this. I'm Rema Charles, a nursery supervisor, Kawakum Uganda Limited, White Nile, Arabica wet milk pipe. Here is where we raise our seedlings. So this is where exactly we are. This is the seed bed where we first plant our seed, seeds after getting from the Bugunyana Research Center. So the process of the seedlings to come at this level, you, it takes a, a period of two months. And then first of all, we after getting the seeds we first soak it in a tank for a period of two weeks to to fasten the the, the, germ, the, the the germination so that it can germinate very faster after that we come with it in the seed bed well prepared as we are seeing here and then you make sure that when you are planting the seeds the the soil is, is worked on, the particles is reduced to avoid you know, the, the, the process where some seeds don't germinate because the, 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 the clocks of the, the soil have, have, have blocked it. So we work on the soil, we level it, we make it in a period where the length here has no problem but the width it, we make one meter to ease working in, in the seed bed. So after we have done that, we keep on now planting. When we plant, and then we, what we do, we, 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 we sprinkle water on it. After sprinkling water, we make sure that this thing will come with the dry grass. We cover it, we mulch it well, so that nothing can tamper with the seeds. When you're trans transplanting it, there's some work you do here. There are some which have you no, know, which are, which have not grown like this. That's why we are saying you pick it carefully to select, because we shall still need this. Even putting it like this in the in, in, in the in the container you are carrying it to to, to where you are transplanting. Uh, one, you need to take cautions off, because along the the way it can get damaged when you pack it here wrongly. So we take care of the seedlings by really putting them rightly here to come up with the soil that the, 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 the new seedlings we are transplanting is going to feed on. We are using you no know, component. You need, for it to survive very well, you need to really you know, give enough food for it. To, that can make it stay for the period of six months in the, in the pot. And between six to eight months like that. So you bring, you come with your sand, forest soil you, and then kral manure you mix them so basically that's what we do here you, you come with the three wheelbarrows of, 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 of forest soil and then two wheelbarrows of, of manure kral manure and then one sand the, 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 the issue of putting sand, you know, when you don't put the sand, is to ease the movement of water and even air in the potting system. So, when you don't put the sand, the soil will become muddy and it's sticky to the extent that you know, plants, the rooting system will, will not survive. In the, within the period of maybe one month like that, you will see the, 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 the seedlings are changing yellows. On this show, we've shared how deep artificial intelligence is getting. 
and by extension affecting all aspects of our lives. Well, it is quite stronger or getting stronger in the cars or the motor car industry. And this is how far it has gone. Cars are traditionally constituted to be beasts of burden or deliverers of luxury depending on the kind of car one drives and the purpose for which they bought it. Today's car, however, offers more than that as manufacturers pay more attention to the safety side of things. If you are the forgetful type, you also have your back covered here. Some of the latest technologies we have, the advancements that they have uh, been put, I can uh, assure you, first of all, you will not be able to start the vehicle if you have not pressed the crutch. Now, this helps a lot, especially to people who don't know how to drive, and more to the kids. That is one. The number two is you will not be able to actually start the vehicle when your seatbelt is not on. It will not be able to engage any gear when the seatbelt is not on. After pressing the crutch, then you will turn the key. When it gets to on, when you try to push it, it will not go. It cannot move. It will not move. Mm. It cannot move unless you can even see. It can't move unless you put on the seat belt. Yes, please. And, and also the crutch, even if I have put on the seat belt, for example, I am showing you, but I don't, but I don't press the crutch, I will still not be able to, you can even see, it cannot go, it will not start the engine. It's because of uh, the technology that has been built within the vehicle to safeguard the safety of the driver and the passengers in the vehicle, yes. Those that drink, today's car presents some good news or surprise, depending on how you look at it. If you're drunk, it will actually detect, it has detectors, it will detect that you are actually drunk. So some of the things it will not be able to let you do, for example, you will not be able to start the vehicle if you cannot, that is if you're totally drunk. And then secondly, you will not be able to, to drive for long, it will actually stop after some time. So next time you go to get yourself a new car, it will not hurt to pay more attention to how much more it can deliver. Well, that brings us to the end of this week's edition of Man and Markets. I've been your host, Charles Boji. Now, for any questions or comments, as usual, don't hesitate to drop us a line on the address on your screen. Until next time, have a good evening. Bye-bye.